Another feature in Jesus Interrupted is the idea that's presented of the model of what's called alternative Christianities. That is, in the first century, there was no such thing as orthodoxy. But what we had were a variety of alternatives to Christianity, each of which claimed something about Jesus and were rooted somehow in, in these early days. And so the idea is, is that the idea that orthodoxy existed in the first century is something that the fourth century, or at least the late second century, imposes back on to the earlier view of Christianity. And no one can make the claim to legitimately go truthfully all the way back to Jesus. The effect of this, of course, is to suggest that Christianity was originally very pluralistic and should be seen that way today, that no one, has, no one can claim the brand, if you will. No one can claim the label. Now let's think about this theory for a second. Uh, it is true that in the first century we do see evidence of tensions within the Christian movement. There is some tension between the, some of the Jewish believers who want to continue their Jewish practices and want Gentiles to continue to practice in a Jewish manner. They almost want Gentiles to become Jews in order to become Christians versus what was the Pauline solution which is to have Gentiles directly come into a relationship with God and uh, not have to become Jewish in their practice. In fact, everything that we have in our texts and our sources suggests that this is the position of Peter as well, and that only when he was inconsistent in Galatians uh, did this tension come up between Peter and Paul. Well, the model of alternative Christianities is to make this a much bigger deal, to say that there really was a Jewish Christianity on the one hand, represented by Peter, by James, by Matthew, and even by Jesus on the one hand, and then there was this freer, more uh, Gentile-oriented Christianity created by Paul. And these two groups were really at opposition with one another. And that opposition continued for a while and really got papered over. And the canon is one way of paper, papering over it to bring all these books together that actually represent this, these disparate approaches to Christianity. Well, what are we to say about this model? I think what we say is, is it's overdrawn that yes, there were tensions and it did sociologically take the church a while to sort out the relationship between being a Jew and being a Gentile in this new mixed community, which meant that two sets of different practices had to be brought together. That took a while to sort itself out. Often it's interesting that the book of Galatians is appealed to as the support for this view. In fact, I did a radio interview with Dr. Ehrman on a radio show in which we debated this point about how far back does this disparate portion of portrait of Christianity go? I attributed it to F.C. Bauer in what was called the first, uh, uh, the, the Tübingen School of the History of Religions, which takes you back into the 1800s. He attributed it to the book of Galatians, saying that it goes all the way back to the beginning where we see Paul taking on Peter and we see this conflict because they had different views. In responding to him, I made a key point, and that is that if we accept the idea that Paul and Peter were in such conflict, such great conflict from the autobiographical testimony of Paul, then why don't we accept the same testimony from the same book that says that these leaders extended the right hand of fellowship to one another? It seems to me you can't have this both ways. You can't appeal to this book for the tension and then ignore the statements about the fact that these leaders actually agreed in principle at the same time. What they were debating was an inconsistency in practice, not an inconsistency in theology. And, and the pressure of the Jewish associations in the Jewish community moved Peter and Barnabas instinctively to move in a certain way back to the traditions that they came out of, and Paul challenged them for being inconsistent at that point and reported on it in the book of Galatians. More likely is the bulk of the Christian movement was very orthodox. There were reactions to it along the way, but these were uh, variations on the rule, if you will, that were reacted to in the, early, in the early centuries and decades. And those squabbles continued on, and we see evidence of them in the second century, but it's not a case of a variety of alternative Christianities. Some pedigrees are better than others.